Good morning. I'm Jack Levering from Comber St. Andrews United Church. And I'm Pastor Melody Levering from New Scotland United Church and Ridge Community Church. This is our call to worship. We gather to worship the one who crafted creation out of chaos. Our cries of joy join the anthems of the universe. We gather to lift our praise to the God who gives us voice. We bring the songs which have echoed in our hearts all week long. We gather as the children of God, our joy unbroken in God's love. Young and old, tone deaf and perfect pitched, lift the old and new songs of faith. Our hymn will be The Lord is My Shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me, the quiet waters by. He though I walk in death, dark veil, yet will I fear no ill, for thou art with me and thy rod and staff me comfort still. Goodness and mercy all my life shall show universe you made the world in beauty and restore all things in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ we pray that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty sickness selfishness war and greed the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice love and peace to the glory of your name amen and let's pray together as Jesus taught us our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading of scripture is from 1 John chapter 3 and starting with verse 16. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have a boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. And our gospel reading is from John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. 
and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Believe and love. This is God's word and we give him thanks for it. Do you remember this story from Carolyn Ross? Ross wrote, a little girl had been shopping with her mom in Walmart. She must have been six years old. This beautiful red-haired freckle-faced image of innocence. It was pouring outside. The kind of rain that gushes over the top of rain gutters so much in a hurry to hit the earth, it has no time to flow down the spout. We all stood there under the awning and just inside the door of the Walmart. We waited, some patiently, others irritated because nature messed up their hurried day. I am always mesmerized by rainfall. I get lost in the sound and sight of the heavens washing away the dirt and dust of the world. Memories of splashing so carefree as a child came pouring in as a welcome reprieve from the worries of my day. The little voice was so sweet as it broke the hypnotic trance we were all caught in. Mom, let's run through the rain, she said. What? Mom asked. Let's run through the rain, she said. No, honey, we'll wait until it slows down a bit, Mom replied. And this little child waited about another minute and repeated, Mom, let's run through the rain. We'll get soaked if we do, Mom said. No, we won't, Mom. That's not what you said this morning, the young girl said, and she tugged at her mom's arm. This morning? When did I say we could run through the rain and not get wet? Don't you remember? When you were talking to Daddy about his cancer, you said, if God can get us through this, he can get us through anything. The entire crowd stopped dead silent. You couldn't hear anything but the rain. We all stood silently. Mom paused and thought for a moment about what she would say. Now some would laugh it off and scold her for being silly. Some might even ignore what was said. But this was a moment of affirmation in a young girl's life, a time when innocence and trust could be nurtured so that it would be bloom into faith, into her faith. Honey, you are absolutely right. Let's run through the rain. If God lets us get wet, well, maybe we just needed washing, Mom said. Then off they ran. We all stood watching, smiling and laughing as they darted past the cars and, yes, through the puddles. They held their shopping bags over their heads. They got soaked. But they were followed by a few who screamed and laughed like children all the way to their cars. And yes, I did. I ran. I got wet. I needed washing. It's a great story. Today's scripture lessons talk about the everlasting love of God. Those who follow Jesus are assured that nothing can separate them from the hand of God. The words we sang from the 23rd Psalm are often used at funerals. We could easily hear these words as death thoughts. But consider why the words are so comforting to those who mourn. Isn't it because the words speak so forcefully about God being with us? and staying with us through eternity. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The gospel reading for today also contains the sheep and shepherd image. 
In the early part of John 10, Jesus tells the parable of the shepherd and then goes on to explain how he is the good shepherd. In her book, The Religious Potential of a Child, Sophia Cavaletti suggests that the shepherd image is one of two images which children three to six can really understand. Her studies with children around the world showed this to be an important place to help children understand the loving, caring, guiding nature of Jesus. Because of the years between today and Jesus' life on earth, we sometimes get cut off from the original meanings. But this image of sheep and shepherd still holds true for today. James Russell encountered a shepherd in the Pyrenees Mountains in Europe. He was bringing his sheep in through the gate at night into the fold. He was guiding them with his staff and calling them by name. Russell asked how he could call them by name when they all looked so much alike. And the shepherd replied, the same way you do people, by their faces. He'd lived long enough with his sheep that he could truly call them each by name. The shepherd of Israel is not the same as images we might have of shepherds leading sheep through green, rolling hills. There was actually very little green, so that the sheep and shepherd sometimes had to climb over cliffs and ravines in order to reach small patches of green. Water was sometimes hard to find, so that the shepherd's job was difficult and demanding. In John 10 and 1 John 3, we're faced with the reality of community. Jesus uses the picture of sheep knowing the master's voice to talk about the importance of knowing each other. There shouldn't be a gap between the love we say we have and the love we share. William Brosson, a Baptist pastor from New York, pointed out that there's a basic difference between John 10 and 1 John 3. In the gospel, there is only one shepherd. We have no confusion about who is in charge. Jesus calls himself the shepherd. We are to follow. In 1 John 3, we're told about how to treat each other. Brasend suggests that is the source of tension. Jesus is in charge of welcoming those he wants through the gate. Our challenge is to love, her, to love whoever comes through that door. The problem is that we don't always take to the people Jesus welcomes. The command is clear. However, and this is the commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he commanded us. We are to love all people that Jesus puts into our path. That's one of the reasons that the Easter season is such an important time for the church. We might complain about all the activities that get planned, the food preparation, the cleaning and fixing of our buildings. But the COVID uh, enforced break has reminded us how much we miss working side by side. Our church was the place where those feelings, uh, those who are feeling a lack of community could hang out with friends. In God's economy, all are welcome. First, John asks, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother and sister in need and yet refuses to help? When the church is working well, the gospel we preach is reflected in the lives we live. So we can feel good about ourselves when we work for peace, when we put an effort to support our local charities and to give hands, uh, kids a helping hand. And who knows, you might get to be known by your neighbor as we live out God's word in truth and in action. On our own, on their own, the sheep lack a sense of direction. Chuck Swindell wrote about this. He wrote, unlike cats and dogs, Sheep can easily get lost, even in the familiar environment of their own territory. Sheep are virtually defenseless. Most animals have a rather effective means of defense, sharp claws or teeth, speed. But the sheep are awkward, weak and ignorant. They have spindle legs and tiny hooves and are pitifully slow, even devoid of an angry growl, defenseless. 
Now I have heard shepherds argue that sheep are far from defenseless. Some of you might have personal experience that suggests otherwise. However, they, like us, depend on the care of the shepherd. We need someone to guide us around the tough decisions of life. We need this very comfortable image of God, nurturing us, caring for our basic needs. But there is a role for the sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Think of Jesus as your coach. Your coach might have all, know all about your ability. He could have studied tapes and seen you in action. He might know you better than you know yourself. But until you put your trust in him, all the help in the world remains as potential help. It just makes sense. If you're planning something about your education, you have to find out what educational opportunities are open to you. If you're trying to plan your career, you must know about jobs. If you're trying to plan your future home, you must learn about the housing market. So if you want to have faith, get to know the author of faith, our Lord Jesus Christ. A British Weekly once ran a story of a meeting of a distinguished actor and an aged minister at a social gathering. Many of you might have heard a version of this story. When the actor was asked to give a reading, he repeated at the minister's request, Psalm 23. Remember that story? Such was the beauty of his voice and the charm of his manner that a murmur of praise ran around the room. And then he invited the minister to repeat the same psalm. And when the minister had finished, all eyes were filled with tears, for he had spoken with deep tenderness and understanding. The actor said, I know the psalm, but you know the shepherd. The good news of Easter resurrection can not come, could not come without Jesus being faithful unto death, the death of the cross. He is the shepherd who discharged his duties faithfully. God took the initiative, sending Jesus that we might become adopted into his family. And when we believe, that belief gives us the power to love made bold by God's love. Let us follow the risen Christ. Amen. We'd just like to pause and remember those who contribute to support the church financially. And I offer this prayer of dedication for the gifts we continue to receive. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask that you would bless the gifts that have been received. We ask that you guide us gently as we use these to do your work in our community and in our world. We give thanks, O oh God, for the gift of your presence and the gift of our faith. Accept the offerings we give in love. Amen. Now we invite you to sing along as Sonia plays for us the Day of Resurrection.
Precious God, we give you thanks for this time of worship. We appreciate the beauty of spring, the new flowers, the buds on the trees, the animals that have come out of hibernation. We appreciate that we are able to share our lives with others. We ask that you continue to bless us with your grace, that you continue to bless us with the gift of our faith. We ask that you watch over us and keep us strong as we try to do our work on this earth. We ask that you keep our volunteers strong and dedicated and that you assist them while they teach others the way Jesus taught us to live. We remember those involved in the camping movement. COVID has created such unique challenges for them. We ask you, God, to bless those who are in need of your love and support right now. In our silent prayers, we ask that you keep watch over those who are sick or in the hospital, those who are facing the loss of a loved one, those who are having difficulties in their homes. We ask God that you stay with all of us as we support these people and others in our community and in our world. We offer these prayers in Christ's name. Amen. As you go out into this world today, think about how you can make a difference. Think about how you can show God's love to those in your caring circles. Stay at home, but reach out to those in need with God's love guiding you. From our homes, find ways to spread the, the love of God. We trust in the peace of Christ. Amen.